Have you ever stared at a number on your lab report and felt your stomach drop? That one number your creatinine can feel like a ticking clock. For millions of Americans, it's not just a lab result, it's a warning. A whisper that something inside your body is struggling quietly and may already be slipping away. Hi, I'm Dr. Johnny, a kidney specialist who spent over a decade helping people not just manage their creatinine levels, but take back control of their health, their peace of mind, and their future. In this video, I'm not going to throw miracle cures at you. I'm going to show you five proven strategies, backed by science, used by top nephrologists, that can actually help reduce creatinine and protect your kidneys long term. But before we dive into the how, you need to understand the why. Because that number on your report, it's more than just ink on a page. It's your body sending up a flare, a cry for help that often gets ignored until it's too late. You see, creatinine is like the exhaust coming from your engine. The harder your body works, the more it produces. But when your kidneys begin to slow down even slightly, that exhaust builds up. And over time, it can become toxic to every other organ in your body. What makes it scarier is this kidney disease doesn't shout. It doesn't cause pain in the beginning. It creeps in silently while you feel fine. And then one day, you're told dialysis might be the next step. But here's the truth. No one tells you. You are not powerless. There is a window, a crucial window, where real change is still possible. And if you're in that window now, even if your numbers are high, you're in the perfect place to turn things around. So stay with me, because the first strategy I'm about to show you is the single most important step to protect your kidneys and possibly delay or avoid dialysis entirely. And it starts with something so many Americans are battling, but few realize is wrecking their kidneys every single day. Let me be blunt, high blood pressure is the silent killer of your kidneys, and most people don't even know it's happening. See? Inside your kidneys are millions of microscopic filters, like tiny coffee strainers called glomeruli. When your blood pressure is too high, it's like blasting those filters with a fire hose. Over time, they tear, scar, and die. And once they're gone, they don't grow back. This is why I always tell my patients, if you want to lower your creatinine, don't just watch your diet, watch your pressure. And I don't mean kind of watch it, I mean, take it seriously. The target is below 120 over 80, not 130, not it's fine at the clinic. Below 120, 80 consistently. And yes, medication matters. ACE inhibitors and ARBs, you may have heard of drugs like Lesnopril or Losartan, don't just lower blood pressure. They protect your kidneys. Clinical trials show they reduce the risk of needing dialysis, and even help slow or stabilize creatinine rise. But here's what most people don't hear. Lifestyle matters just as much. Daily walking, better sleep, managing stress. These are not extras, they are medicine. So if you're ignoring your blood pressure while chasing fancy supplements or diet trends, you're missing the most important piece of the puzzle. Now, before we jump into diet and protein, which gets all the spotlight, let's understand why the food you eat could either heal your kidneys or push them closer to failure. And the difference often just a few grams a day. If your kidneys could talk, they'd probably beg you to ease up on the steak. Here's the truth. Too much protein, especially from red meat, isn't just a diet choice. It's a pressure overload on your already fragile filters. And when you're overfeeding the engine, creatinine builds up fast. What most people don't realize is that your kidneys have to process protein, not just your gut. High-protein diets, the kind praised by fitness influencers, may be fine for bodybuilders with perfect kidney function. But for anyone with declining GFR, it's like pouring gasoline on a slow-burning fire. Now, I'm not saying you have to become vegan overnight, but switching even half your protein to plant-based sources like lentils, beans, tofu, Quinoa can dramatically reduce strain on your kidneys and don't sleep on sodium. Too much salt traps fluid, raises blood pressure, and forces your kidneys to work double time. The sweet spot, less than 2,000 millicorners a day. 
That means ditching processed snacks, canned soups, and restaurant takeout, and learning to fall in love with herbs, garlic, lemon, and spice. Still with me? Good. Because the studies are clear, a low-protein, low-sodium diet doesn't just help you feel better. It helps your GFR stabilize, your creatinine slow down, and your future stay off a dialysis machine. And here's the kicker. This isn't just about what you remove. It's about what you add. The right foods don't just reduce pressure. Some can actually protect your kidneys on a cellular level. Which brings us to a class of medications that's changing the game even for people who never thought pills could help. And in this next strategy, you'll learn why more and more nephrologists are calling these drugs a gift for kidney longevity. Not all medications are bad for your kidneys. In fact, some might just save them. Let me introduce you to SGLT2 inhibitors, a class of medications that started as diabetes drugs but turned out to be one of the most powerful tools to slow kidney decline, even in people without diabetes. Think of it this way when your kidneys are struggling. There's often too much pressure inside those tiny filters. These medications help release that pressure by lowering how much glucose is reabsorbed, reducing inflammation, and easing the kidney's overall workload. The result clinical trials have shown that SGLT2 inhibitors can slow the progression of CKD by up to 30%, lower the risk of dialysis, and even protect your heart along the way. That's right, these medications don't just help your kidneys. They reduce your risk of heart attack and stroke too. Drugs like Empagliflozin and Jardians or Dapagliflozin and Farsiga are now being used in people with GFRs above 20, whether they're diabetic or not. And for many of my patients, these pills became the turning point not just in their numbers, but in how they felt day to day. Now, this isn't something you should self-prescribe. You need to talk to your nephrologist and check if your kidney function, blood pressure, and medication list make you a good candidate. But if you're eligible, this could be the difference between slow decline and long-term stability. And just like with food, timing matters. The earlier you start, the greater the benefit. But medication alone isn't enough. Because there's one sneaky thing that happens when kidneys decline, and it's often invisible on the outside. It's called metabolic acidosis, and it silently damages your kidneys from within. In the next section, I'll show you exactly how it works, and the simple fix that most doctors overlook. Here's something your lab report won't scream out loud, but your kidneys feel it every single day. It's called metabolic acidosis, and it's one of the most underrated threats to your kidney health. When your kidneys start to slip, even slightly, they lose the ability to balance your body's pH. That means excess acid starts to build up in your blood, not enough to make you collapse, but just enough to quietly burn through your kidney tissue, day after day, like a slow, invisible fire. The symptoms, they're vague, fatigue, muscle loss, Bone weakness. Most people don't connect the dots until the damage is already done. But here's the good news. This is one of the easiest once you know it's there. If your bicarbonate level is under 22, your body is likely too acidic. The fix. Often, just a shift in diet, more fruits, more vegetables, more plant-based meals, all of which help restore a healthier, more alkaline environment in your bloodstream. And if that's not enough, your doctor might prescribe sodium bicarbonate tablets. Yes, essentially medical grade baking soda to gently neutralize that acid buildup. It's simple, it's safe when monitored, and it can slow the decline of your GFR, protect muscle mass, and even help preserve bone health. Just one caution if you have high blood pressure or heart failure, be extra careful with sodium intake from these pills. That's why every change, even the good ones, should be done with your kidney team on board. Now, by this point, you've probably noticed a pattern these strategies aren't flashy. They're not quick fixes. They're smart, steady, long-game decisions that protect what you have and buy you time. But there's still one more piece, 
and it may be the most overlooked of all. Because even when you're eating right, exercising, and taking your meds, you could still be quietly damaging your kidneys without realizing it just by what you allow into your body. Sometimes, the most dangerous threats aren't the ones you feel they're the ones you ignore. You could be eating clean, exercising daily, taking your blood pressure meds, and still silently damaging your kidneys every time you reach for the wrong pill, the wrong powder, or the wrong supplement. These are called nephrotoxin substances that harm your kidneys directly, often without warning signs until it's too late. Let's start with the obvious NSAIDs. Over-the-counter painkillers like ibuprofen and naproxen might help your headache, but they restrict blood flow to your kidneys. Take them too often, especially when dehydrated, and you could send your kidneys into a downward spiral. If you need pain relief, acetaminophen Tylenol is far safer for your kidneys. Then there's contrast dye used in certain imaging scans, like CTs. If you have low GFR and no one checks beforehand, that contrast could accelerate kidney damage overnight. Always tell your doctor you have kidney disease before any imaging. Ask, is this test essential? Are there safer alternatives and don't even get me started on herbal supplements? The market is flooded with unregulated powders and pills promising detox, cleansing, anti-aging, but many contain heavy metals or compounds that strain your kidneys, even if your liver feels fine. So here's your rule. If it's not approved by your nephrologist, it doesn't go in your body, period. And finally, review every prescription you're taking with your doctor, not just once. Regularly, make sure the dose, the frequency, and the combination are still right for where your kidneys are today, not six months ago. Because as kidney function changes, so should your meds. You've come this far. You've learned how to control blood pressure, adjust your diet, explore life-saving medications, correct acid imbalances, and now protect yourself from hidden dangers. But knowledge is only the beginning. Because what matters next is what you do with it. Before we close, let me clear up a few dangerous myths that I hear far too often because believing the wrong thing could quietly damage your kidneys over time. First, there's this idea that drinking a ton of water will flush out creatinine. It won't. Sure, hydration is important, but overhydrating won't magically lower your levels. And in advanced kidney disease, it can actually do more harm than good. Second, there's the fear around creatine supplements. For healthy individuals, Creatine is generally safe. It may raise creatinine slightly on lab tests, but that doesn't mean it's harming your kidneys. The two are often confused. Third, another big myth that chronic kidney disease can be completely reversed. The truth is, CKD usually can't be undone, but it can be slowed down, stabilized, even paused for years if you catch it early and follow the right plan. And finally, Beware the hype, no supplement, no powder, no magic pill has ever been proven to lower creatinine quickly or cleanse your kidneys. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Real results come from real strategies like the ones we've walked through today. Let's take a moment and step back. Because what we've just covered isn't just a list of strategies. It's a roadmap. A roadmap that could mean the difference between stable kidney function and a slow decline toward dialysis. I know that hearing your creatinine is rising can feel like a punch to the gut. It's confusing. It's scary. And worst of all, it can feel like no one really explains what to do next. But now you have answers. You know that controlling your blood pressure is one of the strongest defenses you have. You know that changing the way you eat just a few grams of protein or sodium at a time can ease the burden on your kidneys. You've discovered that medications like SGLT2 inhibitors might be a game changer. You've seen how fixing something silent like acidosis could quietly save your kidney tissue. And you've learned that some everyday substances, painkillers, contrast dyes, even supplements could do more harm than good if you're not careful. But here's the truth. None of that knowledge matters unless you act on it. So I want you to take the next step, not someday. Not next month, but today. Start small.
Start with something simple. Check your blood pressure. Add one extra serving of vegetables to your plate. Ask your doctor about your GFR and your meds. Write down a question for your next appointment. You don't need to change everything overnight, but you do need to begin. And as you do, please save this video so you can return to it whenever you need guidance. And subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet, because I share reliable, science-backed tips to help you care for your kidneys with confidence, clarity, and compassion. There's so much misinformation out there, but here you'll always get the truth explained simply. And with your well-being in mind, your health deserves that. You deserve that. So take care of yourself. Take care of your kidneys. And I'll see you again in the next video with more tools, more support, and more hope for your journey ahead.